is the Chrissy Swan Show. Look, I want to say fresh from the weekend, you are definitely, Jack. You had a beautiful weekend in Norsa. In Norsa. It was so nice. I haven't been there for years. What a magical spot. It's just the best place, man. Like, I one know. of my favourite places on earth. How many times have you been there? I think that was probably only my third time. And I, you look, uh, fr- from a practical point of view, I just love that you can fly straight into Maroochydore. <laughs> I know. And scooch up the Sunshine Highway. <laughs> so, what is that what's called? The Sunshine Motorway? Yeah. Up the motorway, up the Bruce it used to be. It's magical. It was so nice. How was yours? It was a lot, actually. I was looking forward to getting to work. Yesterday uh, at about 4 p.m., it involved yum cha and all sorts of stuff. And about 4 p.m. yesterday, I was an empty vessel. Really? Yeah, a total empty vessel, but I got a good night's sleep. Thank you so much for asking. Peg, my daughter, uh, was let loose in the kitchen on the weekend, and she made homemade... Uh, like hash brownie <gasps> things, like you grate up the... Yeah, the potato. Yeah, yeah. and they were so delicious. Yum. And then, because I do believe that mobile phones, etc., are listening to you all the time, this was thrown up at me on Instagram. Did you know that removing potatoes from your diet can help you lose over 80%... Of your will to live. <laughs> <laughs> and absolutely, potato is my favourite vegetable and it got me thinking. Say good day and tell me what is your favourite incarnation of the most versatile and affordable vegetable, the potato. I reckon I know what yours is, but I'll tell you next. Okay. If I know you like I think I know you, I think I know what it is. Okay. Chrissy's Say good day. Potatoes, is there a better vegetable? I can't think of a single one that even comes close. A better vegetable? Is there a better food, Swanee? I really think if I only had potatoes for the rest of my life, I would be happy. Same. They're so good. You just cannot beat a hot chip or a fry. Like, that is by far my favourite I agree. 13, 13, 24, 10, say good day and tell me which is your favourite incarnation of the humble potato based off this little grab that I found on Instagram that spoke to me. Did you know that removing potatoes from your diet can help you lose over 80% of your will to live? I'm going to say 100% of the will to live. (laughs) Now, just before we we opened the mics again, you said you know which my favourite is. And I've got three, but I'm going to circle my favourite incarnation of potato. It was so hard for me. Okay. Do you want me to tell you what I think it is? Yes. It has to be what you've said your favourite food is, and that is the potato cake. Correct! Yes! <laughs> Correct. You can see here proof. But the top three is potato gems. Yeah, okay. Frozen, but mm. you must deep fry them or shallow right. fry them. Don't oven bake them. And the hash brown. You forget a hash yeah. brown from Macca's. It's just a giant potato gem. But potato cakes are my absolute favourite. Anna, what is your favourite incarnation of potatoes? Hi, Chrissy. Uh, my favourite is scalloped potatoes <gasps> with heaps of cheesy sauce Yum. and bacon. Oh, my God, I love that. A potato bake with cream and lots of cracked pepper. Oh, yeah. <gasps> Anna, you've got yep. yourself a Priceline pharmacy voucher. Oh, my God, I'm salivating. <laughs> Jamie, what is your favourite potato dish? Hi, guys. Mine has to be chips on a stick like at the Royal Easter Show. You know, I only just had chips on a stick this year for the very first time. They are so good. I will Google local food trucks at events to see if there's a chips on a stick truck. You must. You must. What is this chips on a stick? I'm not sure what you're talking I about. Think they're, they're called like a tornado or something like that, aren't they, Jamie? Sometimes. Yeah, like you, have you seen? They had them at Aldi last week. I love Aldi. The um, <laughs> vegetable spiralizers. Yes. Oh, it's like the twirl. Yes. Yeah, so uh-huh. you can twirl a potato and then deep fry and put it on a stick. Oh, my God. So and you can get salt Yum. and vinegar. In fact, let's not forget the humble crisp, the crinkle cut crisp from Smith. Totally slipped my mind. Jennifer, what is your favourite? Well, I want to say that firstly, I could live off potatoes for the rest of my life. I think we all could. Food. Such versatility. It's, <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. I actually grew up in America, so I call them tater tots. Yeah. But potato yeah. gems. Potato so gems. Best mixture between potato and hash browns that you can have for lunch or dinner. Oh, my time. God. The best. Tater the tarts. The best tater tarts. You've got a price on pharmacy voucher, Jen. Paul, what is your favourite potato thing? 
That would be mashed potato. Yes, Paul. Yes. And are you like, you know, the French make it with half potato quantity and half butter quantity. <laughs> I do a combination. I go like boiled potatoes, then you add some milk, some butter, yeah. some salt, oh maybe God. some more butter. Yeah. And then it's, if it's creamy, I add a little bit of cheese as well through it. Shivers. Beautiful. Oh, my God. I well, always, that's a meal. I always get so impatient with mashed potato because I never leave the potatoes, like, boiling long enough. And I just really try and stab them down. But you've got to be patient. You that. really do have to be patient. Perfection takes time. You've got a price on pharmacy voucher, Paul. Let's finish with Ellie. Ellie, what is your favourite potato thing? Only because it's the easiest dinner in the world, the baked potato. Oh, for man. The- Yes. And you put it out, they put whatever they want on it, yes. dinner done. And whatever they want on it is usually just butter and cheese and sour <laughs> cream, and I'm here for it. <laughs> the Chrissy Swan Show. Who doesn't love paying less for their favourite beauty brands? Love paying less for glowing skin or love paying less for feeling better? Find great prices on everything you love only at Priceline Pharmacy. Shop in store or online at priceline.com.au. The Chrissy Swan Show. I want to talk about Food Bank for a minute. I am an ambassador for Food Bank. And I just believe in them so much. I first became uh, aware of the amazing work they did during lockdown here in Melbourne. Um, they are a, a national uh, organisation. But d- during lockdown, you know, people weren't working, no one had any money, and Food Bank would have these fantastic sort of drives where you could drive your car in, pop your boot and they would fill it full of fresh and canned and all sorts of food. Um, And I just thought, what a great organisation. So I've been involved with them ever since then and I've gone out to the the main sort of warehouse uh, location. It is extraordinary. It's like a Costco but everything is for people that can't afford to feed their family. How amazing that there is a service like that for people too, because I can imagine if you were in the circumstance of not being able to afford food, which a lot of people are, how daunting it would be to A, ask for help. Absolutely. And B, know where to go. Like, you just wouldn't think that's available you to you. You are absolutely right. And there's a, a news story out today about food insecurity in this country with the cost of living going through the roof. More people than ever are having to decide whether or not to heat their house or feed their kids or fill their car with petrol. That's the the basic Mm. choices. And food is often the first to go. And there's more people this year than ever before in this country that are facing food insecurity, people that have never had to think twice about can I afford that avocado or Mm. that chicken breast they are starting to think that way. And I think it's a really important chat to have. There's absolutely no shame around this. Food Bank are there for this reason. If you are experiencing situations where you're like, well, I can't even put a sandwich in my kid's lunchbox today, this is what you've got to do. First of all, don't have any shame about it. Secondly, log on to Food Bank. Um, it, their website is foodbank.org.au. Click on a link that says find food support. It couldn't be easier. Wow. Then you put in your uh, postcode. Wherever you are in this country, you can put it in. I did a test with postcode 4000 for Queensland and it came up with a huge list. You can choose between food and groceries to prepare. So that's like, you know, uh, going to the supermarket. But Getting it won't your broccoli. Cost you anything. Yep. Yeah, the main ingredients or... There's the option of meals prepared on site, which you would go and and collect. If you put those details in, once again, foodbank.org.au, click on find food support, put your postcode in, and then click which one you're after. A list of of organisations that can help you will come up, including their locations, their phone numbers, how it works. It's easy, okay? And what about people that are in a position to potentially help or give? Good question, Jack. So you can also go to foodbank.org.au and donate cash, or here is a fun thing that you can do. Pop into Minimax. <gasps> Me and some other ambassadors, Hamish Blake, Beck Judd, 
um, Kristen Tid well, Tid Ball, who's like a dessert person, and Ben yeah. Shuri have all designed these spatulas. They're really great quality spatula. I cooked with your spatula this morning, Swanee, with my scrambled eggs, S- and it washed perfectly in the dishwasher. I will add to. I did too. You don't need to put it in a dishwasher. Oh, yeah, I for do. God's sake, no, I'm not scrambled eggs. So they're 19.95. I used mine this morning to make my son's chia. Um, 19.95. 100 of that goes to. Food bank, 100%. So not wow. a cut to Minimax, nothing, nothing, nothing. Go to Minimax. You can get them online or in store, and they are fabulous stocking fillers. A lot of people are going in and buying one of each and then, you know, storing them for Christmas and, and giving them out then. How beautiful. But we can we can do this together, and please remember, if you're finding these impossible choices, nearly 4 million people are in the same boat, and 77% of people that are putting their hand up and saying, this is a this is a new experience for me. They've never experienced food insecurity before. This is what we're facing at the moment. Horrible stuff. Yeah. But good job, Food Bank, and well done on your spatula, Swanee, because it took a while for us to get there with your design, but you've really nailed it. It really did. I'm not very creative. The Chrissy Swan Show. Who am I? A queen in the kitchen? Could be. Now find your queen vanilla in the baking aisle to discover how a little queen does wonders in your bakes. What's my name? Who is it? Chrissy Swans. Who am I? Hello, Lauren. How do you do? Hello, Chrissy. How are you? Good. What do you think of this, Lauren? I'm uh, having a significant birthday in how long? Maybe a week and a half or so? Yeah. And my daughter requested for my birthday for me to make my triple layer coconut cake. <laughs> I actually saw the recipe. I want to try and make it. It's, it's really, so good. it is such a great, uh, it is such a great cake. We put the recipe on our Insta page on Friday, but to, to be honest, you've got to study it. Like you've got to study the method. Yeah, it's not for the, <laughs> it's not for the faint hearted. I think you can do it, Lauren. Oh, I'll try. I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> I feel like Peg should start to learn how to cook it, and then you can start handballing that task to her. Oh my god, I can barely do it. When I look <laughs> at the recipe, it's like that scene from Beautiful Mind with all the numbers, and yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. not, it's not ideal. But let's get you some cash, Lauren. This is how it works. I got five clues in front of me about a particular celebrity, and I've also got five hundred dollars cash to give away thanks to the gorgeous people at Queen Baking. I'm going to take away a hundred dollars for everyone you get wrong. Let's get cracking, Lauren. Let's go. Clue number one. I am the lead singer in a band. Gwen Stefani. No, but good on you for having a crack. Clue number two for $400 cash. I go by a nickname. Very few people know my real name. No, I don't know. Clue three for $300 cash. I love a particular accessory that I wear on my face. Oh, on oh, my face. Quite famous for them. Oh, my God. No. Just have a guess. Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> no, but great guess. Clue two for two, clue four, sorry, for $200 cash. I'm currently performing in Las Vegas. God, it's busy there. Everyone's there at the moment. It's like uh, Disneyland for music lovers. A uh, lead singer. Uh. One of my band's album was quite controversially given to all iTunes customers at no cost and uh, no, no one wanted it. Yes. yes. Bono, the lead singer of U2, famous for his glasses. Uh. Here's a fun fact for you. Bono Vox is actually... The, the full sort of nickname, and it means good voice. There you go. Yeah, his real name's David Houston. I'm a big fan. Yes. Oh, you're not <laughs> stupid. Enough of that negative self-talk. You've got 100 bucks. Blow it on something amazing, Lauren. Chrissy's clickbait. Let's talk about Rihanna, shall we? She has been secretly planning so many secrets at the moment in showbiz. Like what else? Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith yes. being secretly divorced, well, separated. I don't believe it, but yeah. We're going to talk about Meryl Streep's secret separation later on. And Rihanna's been secretly planning a huge $62 Australian dollar, million dollar comeback world tour. Amazing. I mean... Finally! She's struck a deal with Live Nation, which is great. 
And uh, along with the world tour in 24 and 25, there's two albums worth of content ready to go. Well, she hasn't released an album since 2016. Yeah, fi- well, they said five years that she hasn't done anything. But maybe th- maybe that's like live performances or yeah, something. Yeah, like the full body. Of, like uh, She's done like those random songs. Remember that Lift Me Up song from yeah. Black Panther? I didn't like no, that. No, but like the last album that had work on it, which was a tune, yeah. was 2016. So I feel like she'd probably have even more than two albums yes. ready to go. Bare minimum. Plus, she's been so busy over the last few years. She had her last baby two months ago. Yeah. I am never, and she's in that time has, you know, written two albums worth of music and planned a sixty-two million dollar world tour. I'm never going to complain about having two radio shows and a TV show (laughs) when I had three kids under four ever, ever again. Let's move on to Atlanta, shall we? I'm just, I'm putting this here because it is so bonkers and yet so enjoyable. A woman has come home to find her house reduced to rubble. How? Completely demolished. The demolishers got the wrong address. Have a listen. She doesn't sound that fast. It started while she was on vacation and received a call from a neighbor. Did you hire somebody to tear your house down? And I said, um, no. She said, well, there's somebody over here just demolished the whole house and tore the whole house down. Hodgson <laughs> says the workers got nasty. He told her to shut up and mind her own business. <laughs> said, well, look, I want to see a permit or something. And he said, okay. Uh, he pulls it out and he says, oh. I'm at the wrong address. <laughs> I think anyone that's got kids can answer the question. Did you hire someone to tear your house down? No, I had children and they're demolishing it piece by piece. <laughs> this is the Chrissy Swan Show. Steaming into 3 p.m. with the Chrissy Swan Show on Nova. And tonight, Mars Singer, 7.30, Channel 10. It's back Monday and Tuesday nights now. Oh, a double dose. Which is really good because in this world of instant gratification, I love an unmasking. Bang, bang, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Tonight's Do Not Miss Tonight's. For starters, Husey's dressed as John Bon Jovi and you do not want to miss that. It is both disturbing and beguiling. But secondly... There is an unmasking tonight that is going to knock you off your feet. More so than Charlotte Crosby because yes. that knocked me off my feet. Yes. You won't believe you're looking at one. Okay. That's I all I'm saying. Cannot wait. 7.30 tonight on Channel 10. Also, we're going to be talking about one of your Queen Swanee, Drew Barrymore. Yes. But next, Chrissy's Quizzy. Chrissy's Quizzy. Melody. Can you believe what we've stuffed inside the limited edition Money Can't Buy bum bag today? I can't believe it. Thank you guys so much for having me on air. I am so excited. Oh, Melanie, I can hear it. You're you're a darling. Well, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to come on air and give it a go. Take that rock and bum bag away. You're my favourite so far, but I haven't met you yet, Linda. Hi, Chrissy. Hi, Dad. Oh, no. Oh, we love you both. They're both beautiful. <laughs> oh, God. There can only be one winner and, of and the bum bag. weekend tickets weren't exciting enough to get a bum bag as well. I know. I mean, How look, let's, let's face it. The, the weekend tickets are the, are the, the good <laughs> thing here. Are you an exec at Nova, Melanie? Because you're really turning it on and <laughs> giving a vibe. I am a no. I do. I love Nova from morning till night. Oh, my, my God. Melanie, the best. All right. Do you need to do a plug for the weekend tickets? I sure do. Let's do it right now. The Let's weekend is bringing his after hours till dawn tour to Australia this November and December. It's finally here. So exciting. And if you would like to go, visit livenation.com.au for tickets and more info. But Linda and Melanie, these tickets could be yours for free in this bum bag. All right. Your names are your buzzers, Mel and Linda. It's the best of five, meaning the first person to get three answers correct wins the game and will walk away with the money can't buy Chrissy Swancho bum bag with tickets to the weekend in them. Question number one. Rebecca Luz was in the news over the weekend after biting back. Who was she biting back at? Rebecca Luz, she was in the, she was all over the headlines years and years ago for having a very famous affair. You Linda. haven't, you haven't watched the Beckhams, have you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you must. It's on Netflix. It's a great look. Uh, the Beckhams is uh, who she was biting back at. Question number two: A matinee performance takes place at what time? Linda. Yes, Linda. Yeah. Oh, in the afternoon. Yes. 
And how civilised, Linda. I wish everything was a matinee. Oh. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> <laughs> Question number yep, three. Yep, yep. <laughs> 17 years ago, Fergie released this song. Melanie. Yes, Melanie, what's it called? Fergie. Fergie, it's Fergalicious. It is yes. Fergalicious. That's one apiece. Question number four. Which Australian state was pop star Sia born in? Melanie. Yes, Mel. Australia. No, which Australian state? Oh, New Zealand. <laughs> oh, Melanie, you've lost your mind. New Zealand is a separate country. It's not a I state in Australia. Answer, I don't know. Answer? Linda, Linda. Linda. <laughs> South Australia. Yes, it is South Australia. <laughs> that was amazing. Two points to Linda, one to Melanie. Linda, this one could be Woo. for the win. <laughs> Name the pop star The weekend has previously dated. Linda. Yes, Linda, for the win. Selena Gomez. Yes! You've bloody done it! Woo! Linda! Oh God, Linda! You oh, are oh, off to see you. the weekend, my girl! Oh, I'm beside myself. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Nova. That is just thrilling. Melanie, I'm I feel like so you deserve a second crack. Can we call you back tomorrow to try out again? Let's do it. Yeah, I might be in New Zealand, guys. I'm <laughs> <laughs> the Chrissy Swan Show. The Chrissy Swan Show. Drew Barrymore is one of my queens. She sure is. Even though she's had a bit of a rough trot um, ethically of late by keeping on filming her show in, uh, in what is it? The strike. During the strike. Well, she said she was going to go back, but then she didn't for a while. She did hold out for a little while. I feel like... Like, get over it, everybody. Yeah. She, 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 was, she made a mistake and she admitted it, yeah. which is, you know, evolved. There was no malice in what she was trying to do. And I would expect nothing less from Drew. In other news, Drew related, apparently she's been in a relationship for three years. Another secret. I thought that when we went into the song before. Another secret relationship. I just love all these secrets. I love it because it's no one's business. But then it, Yeah. But she's very open when she needs to be, Drew, and that's why I love her, I think. There was a, a little snippet that went viral over the weekend of her behind the scenes of her show. So all the audience are in bleachers and uh, she comes out and she meets them all, which I totally get. It's my favourite part of filming any TV show is getting out and touching the audience, which she does. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, a woman said to her, you know, we have met before, met women in the audience, we've met before and recounted a story of when they met. Now, um, the, the audio is great, but I'll just set it up for you because sometimes you can't hear anything. It's an older woman and she's a flight attendant and she met Drew on a plane four years earlier when Drew was absolutely bawling her eyes out, going through a whole lot of stuff. They were strangers to each other, but this beautiful flight attendant remembered Drew sitting in the galley of the plane, you know, where they cook all yeah. those delicious meals and bring out that terrible coffee. <laughs> um, and this woman was obviously so kind to her that even she was emotional recounting the story. I was your flight attendant four years ago, and here I'm crying on your show now. <laughs> And we sat in my galley, and you cried and cried because you were going through so much. Do you remember what I was going through? Yes, at I the do. Time? I do. You were just bawling, and I just was holding you. Yeah, that was a really, really hard oh. year. Thank you. It was actually the year um, I stopped drinking. <laughs> I love – there's so much about this that I love. First of all, 13, 24, 10, when have you benefited from the kindness of strangers? Because there is a very special exchange that happens between one human being that's going through a hard time and another human being that just happens to be there and has absolutely no relation or need to soothe this person, but they do it anyway. It's yeah. a beautiful moment. But I love that Drew Barrymore, she's obviously a very emotional person. We know and love that about her. 
She's obviously lost her mind in front of so many strangers. <laughs> yeah, that she couldn't. Yeah. And been in floods of tears <laughs> that not immediately did she go, oh, God, I remember that time that I couldn't stop <laughs> yeah. crying in the galley of an aeroplane and a beautiful flight attendant helped me. She was like, can you remember, you remember? what I was, which, which episode was this exactly? But what a beautiful exchange between two human beings that didn't know each other before and were there for each other anyway. 13, 24, 10, when has a stranger been your person? Has someone ever come up to you in public if you've been upset, like, and assisted you? Um, I don't think so. I remember I lost my mind once. I was so stressed and tired and I couldn't stop crying at a, like, a public function on the Sunshine Coast. Yeah. But my boss just got mad at me and told me to go home. <laughs> <laughs> the Chrissy Swan Show. What? A beautiful exchange it is when you're at a low ebb and a stranger happens to be the person in your orbit and they turn up for you. And sometimes it's almost like I can imagine better because they're a fresh set of ears and there's no bias. They don't know you. They don't really know your story. It means so much more, I think. Yeah, it does. Because it's pure kindness and humanity. Drew Barrymore uh, was filming her show and one of the audience members said, the last time I saw you was four years ago and you were crumpled in a heap in the galley of my aeroplane and I just hugged you and hugged you and I just was like, oh, I love that. And it reminded me, a couple of weeks ago I was out walking and it was just on nightfall and I saw a young man walking towards me sobbing, just racked in sadness and I was so – it's so shocking as well to see somebody feeling something that's not just rushing around. Yeah. And I just said to him, are you okay? And he was like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. But there's very – there's almost nothing more that you can do. So when you get the opportunity to do more than that, it's so beautiful because there's nothing in it for you, you know. Sandra, when has a stranger been your person? Um, I was in the supermarket just standing – in Woolies trying to decide whether to buy the ripe bananas or the ones that weren't so ripe. And this girl was not just in my own little world, like quite emotional. And this girl standing next to me, like, you know, chatting to me, she said, are you okay? I was like, oh, not really. And I just, for some reason, just told her everything. And then she was sort of like saying things to me and we just looked at each other and we just both had tears and we just ended up cuddling each other. And like, oh my God, I think I was supposed to bump into you today. And we sort of cuddled and said, thank you so much. That was amazing. Gorgeous. She went. She went. And I never saw her again. (laughs) Normally you bump into people in the supermarket again, but I didn't see her again. That is a magic, a magic, magic moment. And did you get to pick the right banana, Sandra? (laughs) (laughs) I took both. I took the right one. Sometimes, the right. sometimes just the choice between a green one and a ripe one is enough to send you over the edge. Absolutely. Sky, when has a, a stranger been your person? Um, so I was going through a really tough time and both my friends and I were at home sitting together talking about it and we were both like, let's just go to Spotlight. But we decided to go make a blanket for God knows what reason. <laughs> um, so we get to Spotlight. We're looking around at the materials and the fabrics. And this lady walks up to us and she asks us, oh, what are you, um, what are you making? We said, oh, we're trying to make a blanket. And then we just started talking and we were both telling her we were going through a lot of things, like, and we just wanted to make a blanket and all of this. And, like, she was just really there for us. She listened to us. And then she continued on shopping. We were, like, walked away. We went up to the register to pay a little bit later and she came over and saw that we were both scrunching through our purses to pay. And she came over with a fifty dollar note, handed it over, and paid for everything that we were going to get. Oh my god! Oh, I love that. And she said that she thought it was just so inspiring that people were still trying to make things, and she really loved what we were trying to do. So she, um, I love that. I love yeah, paying things for. I nearly broke down crying then. So I waited till I got in the car, and I just broke down, and it just made my day. Really, How I've been gorgeous! Going through so much. Superheroes yeah, don't always wear capes, but they are often at Spotlight, is what we need to take from this. <laughs> Nikki, when has a stranger turned up for you? Um, well, I was flying back from New Zealand. I was seven months pregnant, and my mum had been killed by a drunk driver. Mm. And I was flying back, and I was in economy, and obviously I was very upset. And, and the attendant came up to me and said, you know, can I help you? And I just said, oh, you know, I've just lost my mum. And he took me up to business class 
and he oh. set me in a little spot just by myself and he gave me all, you know, lots of treatment. And then when I was about to leave, he gave me a bottle of Moe champagne and said, well, when the baby's born, you can crack. You can, you can crack the bottle. We've just lost Nikki. What a great story. Yeah. And you never, ever forget that kindness it's just i'm going to go out and do something today i wonder how i wonder what i'm going to do i'm going to go to spotlight and buy some something some yes blankets. yes chrissy's clickbait so many secrets oh my god secrets and lies this week that's been the theme hasn't it first of all jada pinkett smith and will smith haven't been together for six years we had no idea how very dare they have a life that is not completely public. Also, don't believe it. She's just trying to sell her book. Do you reckon? Yeah. You're so cynical and I love that about you. <laughs> the latest secret is Meryl Streep and her husband, the most unfortunately named Don Gummer. Gummer. It's an awful surname. It's so bad. I've heard Gunner quite a lot as a last name, but Gummer, like, surely you change that. I just think, I, I just don't like it. It's, I just don't like it. It sounds like an action. Don Gummer. They've been separated for more than six years, but they will always care for each other. I love this so much. So they went their separate ways six years ago, and it's nobody's business. No, and also they'd been married for 45 years, so, like, you're probably sick of each other. <laughs> no. <laughs> is that your takeaway? That's my take. Good on you, Meryl. My takeaway is that, you know, obviously the media respected them a lot more than they respect other people because usually when, you know, famous people, you know, when the media find out that famous people are separating, then they go live with the story whether or not the person endorses it, not speaking from personal experience. <laughs> but it ca- it can occur. So I just think that's wonderful and I, I love them. I wonder if also it. with Meryl, because she's sort of not out and about as much anymore, whether because she's not being papped every second day, it's sort of easier to keep that sort of stuff private because you don't really see what she's up to week to week or day by day to day. I think it's interesting that someone like her has so much respect. Yeah. And I, I, I think that's wonderful and it's been very well earned. I just, I just love the whole thing. Now, Sia, her song, Gimme Love, is the best song at the moment. Without Absolute question. tune. It is a banger. It is so uplifting. Well, imagine my delight when there was this little bit of footage that came from a dinner thrown by Kathy Griffin, Griffin um, where Sia is just asked to sing something and she belts this out. Wait, wait, unstoppable, unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. I'm I'm a Porsche with no brakes. I'm invincible. Yeah, I win every single game. I'm so powerful. I don't need batteries to play. I'm so confident. Yeah, I'm unstoppable today. Unstoppable today. Unstoppable today. Unstoppable today. Yeah, I'm today. Everyone just goes silent at the table. They're literally having a dinner, ta- dinner, you know, conversation, party. And she belts that out, which I've got two thoughts. One, if my, I wouldn't do my party trick straight after that, which is put on a lipstick without using my hands. Wait, I did not know that was a party trick you could do. That's my party trick. I. I would still do that after Sarah because that is impressive to me. Where I don't do you, think so. Where do you put the lipstick? I, I wedge it in between my boobs and then I go like that and I I, I can do it. <laughs> oh, my God, that's amazing. That beats Sia Sia singing. I don't think it does beat <laughs> Sia singing. So I'd be like, no, sorry, I've got nothing. I, I've got no party tricks after that. And secondly, the dinner looks amazing. Kathy Griffin, Selma Blair, Jesse Tyler Ferguson. There were some other ones there too that I can't remember. They were the main big hitters But though. it was just loud women and gay men and it reminded me of what I'm going to do for my birthday. Loud women and gay men. <laughs> can you please pull out your party trick at your birthday? Yeah, I totally can. I can do it for you in a second. I love it. That's us done for today. <laughs> Bye. Now check this out. The Chrissy Swan Show is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.